making pernil. It's a very requested recipe. I hold it so near and dear to my heart. I wanted to make sure it was perfect for you guys, so it finally has my stamp of approval, and I'm ready to send it off into the world. Good. It's a juicy, tender pork shoulder that's been marinated for almost 12 hours, slow roasted till it's literally fall off the bone tender. It's so delicious, and I can't wait to share it with you guys, so let's get right into it. marinade. Um, I usually like to make my own. That way I can kind of control all the ingredients that are in it instead of buying the bottle. But if that's on you, go ahead. I'm not judging. So really easy here. Uh, I'm going to put everything into a blender. I'm going to put 10 garlic cloves in some ground cumin powder. So I'm going to put that in as well. That's going to add a nice smoky flavor. Add some oregano, onion powder, some black peppercorns, and they're whole, but once they go in the blender, it's gonna blend up fine. <laughs> have some orange juice, freshly squeezed lime juice, and I also have some lime zest. I'm gonna zest one lime. All right, so let's talk salt for a second. So a lot of people either under season their pork or over season it, but I learned um, from another YouTuber, actually, her name is Chef Z, out to you girl. Um, she has this math equation for how much salt to add to your pernil and it's however many pounds your pernil is, divide that by two and that's how many tablespoons you should add of salt maximum. So mine's is a four pound pernil for shoulder so I'm going to add two tablespoons of salt. I also have some vegetable oil. All right, now we're just gonna blend that up and we're almost halfway done. I'm gonna pour my marinade into a more manageable bowl. Look how creamy that is. Let's talk pork now. So I have a bone-in picnic cut pork shoulder. I know that's like a mouthful, but if you ask your local butcher, they'll hook you up. You can also use boneless. Um, it tends to get a little bit dry, so I kind of like the bone option. But it's completely up to you. Whatever you can find, I'm sure it's going to work. As long as it has that skin on top. That's going to be like money in the oven. I also clean my pork, which means I just use some cold water and vinegar and kind of give it a good rinse, make sure there's no extra blood in there or any like nasty, slimy stuff. You don't want that. So I've washed it, dried it, and this is where we are now. So let's start by marinating our pork. So if you flip it upside down, you're gonna see there's no fat. There's very little fat there. You're gonna to wanna to grab a knife. And this is a fun part. You kinda of get to stab it. <laughs> you wanna stab your pork and do it like crosswise. Do a little cross. And those are gonna make nice deep pockets for the marinade to sit in. So you wanna go ahead and do that kinda of all over your pork. You're gonna feel where that bone is and do it around it. I'm gonna grab some of this marinade and rub it all on the outside of my pork. Panilla is so common in a lot of Latin American countries. It was really cool is everyone makes it their own way. So whenever I go to like the Colombian's house, they'll make it a little bit differently than a Puerto Rican's house. But it's still the same ingredients, just a little different seasoning. But where all those pockets that I put earlier, all those holes I put, I'm kind of moving my marinade in. Once I've already gone ahead and put the marinade in all those holes that I made earlier, you want to go ahead and flip it around. and pour more of that marinade on top. And you are gonna have some leftover marinade. Don't worry, we'll have a use for that later. So this is one of my tricks that my mother never did growing up, but I kind of learned along the way. We're gonna put our pernil, our pork shoulder, into an oven safe bag. Yes. The same kind that you put turkey in, we're gonna put the panini right in here. And what that's gonna do is gonna preserve the moisture of the pork while it's in the oven. All the juices you're gonna stay in while allowing the skin to stay nice and crispy. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put my marinated pork right into the bag. I've lightly floured it according to the instructions on the package of the oven bag. I wanna go ahead and grab my panini, put 
put it right in the bag. All the extra marinade, we're going to put right in there as well. Lock up my bag. <laughs> you can go ahead and move it around at this point if you want to. Make sure everything's evenly coated. And this is going to go into our fridge for like three hours minimum, but really I want you to leave it there for overnight. Overnight is always best with panini, and it's because it's such a meaty, meaty cut of meat that you really want all that marinade to seep in and start breaking down the tissue before you eat it. All right, I'm gonna put this in the fridge and then we're gonna pop it into the oven. I've gone ahead and shredded all my pork and it's literally falling off the floor tender. It's so juicy. The only thing left to do is just to give it a try. Mmm. It's so juicy and garlicky. This is so good. I can't wait for you guys to try this at home. And I'm so excited to finally share this recipe. It's been a long time coming. So many of you have requested it, so I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. You know what to do. I'll see you guys next time.